Hello, and welcome to Boomer and Beyond Wellness. I'm Angela Fischetti. Today, we're going to do some yoga together, folks. And I'm calling this one Standing Yoga with a Chair. So we won't be using the chair for the entire session, but for probably the better part of a half of it. Now, the type of chair that I'm going to use is a, a standard yoga chair without the backing. However, you can have a folding chair with the backing. What's really important is that the chair does not have wheels and that it does not have arms as well. Other accessories we'll be using today, of course, would be a sticky yoga mat, but I'd like you to make sure it's on a flat surface and that there's no throw rug underneath. We'll also be using yoga blocks. And for those of you new to yoga, well, this is a block and you have level one, you have level two, as well as level three. You can use any one of those levels. You can use more than one block, whatever works best for you. We'll also be using a uh, yoga strap. My strap is eight feet in length. Typically they sell them for like between six and eight feet in length. And I have two DIY yoga blankets here. So then what are they? To fold it up, but make sure when you fold up your towels, they're nice and neat as well as those yoga blankets. So the medical disclaimers for today. So this is the stuff that I find, these are the issues that I, I encounter quite a bit that have some challenges with yoga. Is, it, is this medical disclaimer exclusive to these issues? No, all right? However, I wanna point them out to you. So anybody who's ever been diagnosed with any type of back spine issue or postural deviations, um, and you know that the list is really long when it comes to the back and the spine. Um, those of you who are, I, well, you could be medicated or not for hypertension. I know folks with both, but for hypertension, uh, you want to pay attention to the modifications of vertigo, GERD. If you've ever had a stroke or a TIA, a transient ischemic attack, carpal tunnel syndrome, pinched nerve at the neck, and also um, rotator cuff muscle issues within the shoulders. Now, I will be providing modifications. I will be making suggestions. I highly encourage you to follow my suggestions if you have these issues. I would also encourage you to preview the video first before doing the program and look for what you can do. We're real great. When we have different medical issues, we know what we can't do, but look for what you can do. And if you're still not sure after you watch the video, then I would invite the medical health care practitioner who knows your body best to preview the video as well and help you make an informed decision. So with that, I'd like to get started here with you for our yoga practice. So let's just take a few moments to center in, bringing the feet together, closing the eyes, hands to the heart. So we start out in a prayerful version of Tadasana, mountain pose, just closing the eyes. Now notice when you close the eyes and you're standing, you start to get challenged with your balance that maybe those ankles are sort of going to wiggle, wobbling around. Well, they're doing their job. They're supposed to do that for balance. Notice perhaps that the belly button pulls in. That's the transverse abdominis, the deep of, deepest of the core muscles, getting involved to help you balance. You might notice that your quadricep muscles, your front thighs, are squeezing. Your gluteals might be engaged. You're squeezing them. All of this is appropriate when you're standing with eyes closed. Now, if it's too much for you and you have vestibular challenges, please, of course, open your eyes. Just hold here for a few more moments. And in yoga, you want to breathe deeply in and out, preferably through the nose if it's possible for you. Inhaling and exhale, rooting your feet into the earth and using this namaste position of the hands at the heart to remind you to generously lift the heart. Inhale 
and exhale. Inhale and exhale. If you do need to open the eyes, it's perfectly all right. Just take a few moments to set an intention or a dedication for your yoga practice. Perhaps sending someone in need healing, loving light of energy. And this someone could even be yourself. And take this message with you throughout the course of your yoga practice, and perhaps beyond throughout the rest of your day. Slowly open the eyes. Let's lower the hands down. Let's take some nice big shoulder rolls up, back, and down, up, back, and down. So we're going to start out with movements of the spine, excellent for mobility. So I'm going to stand with the hips width apart. I'm going to face you in the beginning here, but then I'm going to turn around and face the side. So I line up hips width apart by placing the hands up a high on the iliac press, the high pelvic bone. Now you might feel some sharp bony projection. This is the anterior superior iliac spine. Place the hands to the inside, look down and line up ankles to knees to the inside of the pelvic bone. Now I will turn to the side a bit here. Place my hands lightly on the thighs, the elbows are straight, the knees are bent. And notice I come into a baby little back bend. I drop the belly down, tip the tailbone up and back. Now those of you with hypertension, vertigo, GERD, stroke, and TIA, just please keep your head neutral. The rest, if you want, you can certainly feel free to open up across the shoulders and drop the head back, stretching those beautiful anterior neck muscles here in a baby back bend, the standing cow. On the exhale, I'm going to tuck the buttocks under. Now, those of you, again, with GERD, vertigo, hypertension, I'd like you to just come up to neutral. The rest of us can go right into a standing abdominal crunch called the standing cap. This is spine flexion. So you want to think you're drawing that belly button in deeply that's coming out the small of the back. And inhale into spine extension, standing cow. Exhaling into spine flexion, breath in and out through the nose again. Inhale. And exhale. Let's hold here again. Let it go. And then take your time to slowly roll on up, heavy shoulders, heavy head. And once the knees are straightened, you're lifting the head. Inhale. And exhale into nice big shoulder rolls. Now, I want to do it again. I'm going to face the other side. But this time, I'm going to come right into spinal flexion. So those of you who have the back spine, you're not going to do this one. You can certainly experiment with extension into neutral. So we're going to come into the spinal flexion, belly button drawn in. My right hand grabs my left wrist, and I'm going to pull that left arm over toward the right. I'm not twisting and turning, folks, just to pull over in the direction of my right toes. Moving here, nice stretch for the quadratus lumborum muscle at that low back, for the intercostal muscles between the ribs, for that latissimus dorsi muscle. Breathing. Now I interlock the fingers. For hypertension, you may, you may have been told not to squeeze the fingers. So you can place one hand on the other. And I'm going to make a, a big basketball hoop out in front. I keep pulling the belly button in. Deeply with, deeply engaged with that transverse abdominis. 
And then left hand grabs the right wrist and over we go, just a little bit, not a big twist, anything like that. Heading in the direction of the left toes. Oh, it feels really good. Click. And back to center with that basketball hoop. And then I slowly come all the way up. Now I'm squatting deeper just so that you can see the position of the arms. So my palms are facing the ceiling, right? Now this is a long neck. I'm not doing this. This might be contraindicated for you with pinched nerve and rotator cuff, whereas this is not, for most at least. And let's do a little mobility of the neck by turning the head slowly from side to side. Caution those of you with vertigo with this movement. Some of you might be able to do it, some of you might not. So just that's why I say caution. These are soft, belly buttons in. Slight pelvic tuck. One more to each side. Inhaling. And then exhaling. So all standing poses today, all standing movements. And now I'm going to open out wide. And I'm going to extend my wrist. Now this is the caution for carpal tunnel syndrome. No matter what position the hand is in. That's all extension of the wrist. So the rest of us are going to push out through the heels of the hands and pushing the walls away. I'm not yet bringing the arms back here, right on out to the side. But the carpal tunnel, you're going to have your palms face forward and you're going to send energy out your middle fingers and you will wind up stretching the entire length of the arm. It's a little trick that the ballet dancers do. And then inhale, turn the thumbs down. Exhale, let's interlock the fingers behind the back. Roll shoulders back. I draw the palms together. Now, what I don't do is a forward head projection thinking I'm getting those arms further back or not. So yes, folks, I talk a lot about the details because I want the work to apply to your activities of daily living when you're off the yoga mat. And if it's too much with interlocked fingers for hypertension, you can use your yoga strap. Stretch out across that chest, the front shoulders. And then I gently release the arms whew, and take some nice big shoulder rolls. I want to do some lateral flexion with you, some side bending. So I'm gonna stand with the feet wider than hips width apart. I lift up on the kneecaps to isometrically contract those quadriceps. So on the inhale, I'm gonna slide my right hand down the outer right leg. Exhale left hand to waist. Notice I turn the sternum toward the ceiling. This prevents the right side organs from collapsing. And then I bring that left arm out and up. Now, what if you have rotator cuff or pinched nerve? This might be about as high as you can go or any other kind of shoulder issue. So you stay there, you stay wherever you can keep a straight elbow. Don't do this thinking you're going over further. You're not, and sometimes it's stressful on that joint. But if you don't have any issues, then sweep that arm out, up, and over. Weight back into the heels a little bit more. Hips forward, torso back. Stretching out the internal and external oblique muscles which are responsible for turning and twisting and rotating that spine. Now inhale, I turn that left palm toward the ceiling, grab an imaginary hook, exhale, push down into that outer left heel as you vigorously reach out to the left, slide down on the inhale and slide up on the exhale, making sure we're not collapsing left side, sternum to the ceiling. Inhale, we glide that arm out, up, and over. Exhale, hold, getting a beautiful stretch in the intercostal muscles between the ribs. 
they're responsible for 25% of your respiratory cycle. And inhale, turn the palm up, grab a hook. Exhale, push down into that right heel, vigorously reach out to the right. And let's take some nice big shoulder rolls. Now, I'm gonna bring my feet a little bit wider and I'm going to bring my hands on my sacrum, the flat triangular plate at the low back, actually upside down triangular plate. So I have those feet wider. Now, when I go here, what is that? That's wrist extension, not good for carpal tunnel. So you can take a soft fist or hands to the buttocks or to the back of the thighs and the wrists won't bend at all. I roll the shoulders back. Now, for some of you, this might be, actually, this might be about as far back as you can go. That is fine. Now, those of you with the hypertension, vertigo, GERD, transient ischemic pack, or stroke, you do this with your head neutral. Don't drop your head back. So I'm going to start to kind of self-manipulate. Notice I went a little bit one side and then the other. Roll shoulders back to a beautiful back extension, offsetting all that forward flexion we do all day. And let the head go. And breathe. Now inhale as I straighten my knees. I lift up on the kneecaps, contracting the quads. Exhale. But take that inhale at the very top of the movement to prevent orthostatic hypotension, which is a rapid plunge of the blood pressure. I don't know about you, but that feels really good. So I want to tie together all those movements of the spine we just did. Spine flexion, extension, lateral flexion. And I want to now tie in some of uh, rotation. And we're going to play with this because, and this, by the way, if you're prenatal, this is a great move for your back. So those hands are going onto my sacrum again, and I'm going to belly dance. Just tying them together. Take your time. Oh, so good on the back. And reverse. Back extension, the deeper one we did, is really a standing camel, right? So Ustrasana. And stand up, take the shoulder rolls. Now, I'd like you to bring your feet wide apart. And I'm going to stand at the feet pigeon-toed. That means turned in toward each other. But I just keep double-checking, are they in the same line as each other. We want the pressure to be in the outside edges of your feet. That's going to uh, resonate throughout the lateral side of your legs and thighs. In that anatomically, your leg is from below the knee down to the ankle, all right? And above the knee up is the thigh. So I've got a lot of strength there. A lot of times when I ask people, particularly those who are older, I can use the word, I just turned 65, they buckle at the knees. They can't hold themselves up. So you can bring your legs closer together if you wish. Now, we're going to bring the arms out wide. Inhale. Exhale. I turn the thumbs down. Interlock those fingers again. And here I go. I'm going to come into that back bend. Careful. Head neutral for those who know you need to do that. And then going to hinge forward from the hips. Those of you with back spine, you need to stay upright and focus on opening the chest and strengthening those lateral legs and thighs. And pitching forward, hinging, hinging, hinging. Belly button is in. And if the hamstrings or shoulder guard were tight, you can actually bring your legs wider apart, pitch the body weight forward, and it's a variation on Prasarita Parottanasana, separated leg stretch, stretching the plantar fascia underlying the feet, the connective tissue, your Achilles tendon, calf, hamstrings, gluteals, back. 
and of course the chest and arms when the arms are interlocked. Now inhale, come up halfway, hold on the exhale, and then inhale slowly. Come all the way up, exhale, shoulder roll it. Now I'm gonna show the modification for some of you by using the strap. So you can choose to heel toe or pop your feet together, whichever works for you. So you can use your strap behind you. This is a super long strap, all right. It's wide. Here we go again, inhale, exhale, hinge. And for some of you, this might be your range of motion, right? Just don't let the shoulders do this, folks. Roll them up and back. I want scapular retraction. The scapulae, the shoulder blades are like kissing cousins coming in toward each other. Gently grazing. And breathe. Those of you a little more advanced, you can take a hold of your big toes in Yogi Tolak. That's your peace fingers wedged between the big and second toe. And you place the thumbs down in front of the big toe. Inhale, look out in front. Now on the exhale, I bend the elbows out to the sides to utilize the bicep muscles, not the shoulders, to help pull me forward and down. Try not to round down too much. Bringing the crown of the head down, pressing into the outside edges of the feet. Just all variations on Prasarita Parottanasana, separated leg stretch. And inhale, I look forward. Now exhale, hands to the waist, hold halfway. Notice I'm not dropping the front shoulder, roll them back. Inhale, pull the torso forward. Exhale, come all the way up, hold a moment. Always make sure you're not dizzy, all right? And then heel toe, up if you'd like to. Don't have to though, all right? So let me just put this down for the moment, out of the way. And now from here, I'm going to grab the chair, set it up so that the seat is actually facing my backdrop. Just want to make sure that where I set it, you're going to fully see the feet. All right. Let's bring this close by and this. Okay, so now stand with the legs wide apart. Again, a little pigeon toed. I'm going to turn my right foot out at 90. I'm lining up the front heel with the mid arch of the back foot. It's bisecting the arch of the back foot. Now I bring my left hand to my pelvis because this side on me wants to just rotate that, just wants to go. So I'm gonna pull it back, self-adjust here as well. I'm going to turn my foot out, just bring it a little forward. There it is. That's a little more comfortable. And then we bring the arms out, looking beyond the right middle finger, but think somebody's pulling you back to the left. So it's oppositional movement in yoga, hatha, and sun moon. So now from here, somebody's pulling me. Inhale, lean and reach forward. I'm going to bring my left hand to the chair. And then on the exhale, I take the right hand to the top rung of the chair. And then I'm going to rotate my torso toward the ceiling. Pressure points out of that heel, mound of the front big toe. Use your left arm, self-adjust, rotate, pull those ribs up toward the sky. Uttita Prikonasana, extended triangle. Do you have to come all the way down to the floor, or all the way down to the chair? No, you can even work with your hand on the chair, that right hand on the chair, on the seat. You can work with it on top of the back of the chair. Hold steady now. If it's too much on your neck, don't let this happen. Don't sag the head. 
You exhale, look down at the big toe. You inhale, look up beyond the left middle finger for your drushti, your point of focus. So if the neck bothers you, that's something you can do. We can also take that left arm out on a diagonal from the ear and the shoulder in a Shivananda version of triangle, just another form of Hatha Yoga. Bring the arm up. Inhale, grab an imaginary hook. Exhale, push down into that outer left heel to come all the way up. And then bringing your hands to your heart. Now from here, I'm gonna turn this way and I'm gonna bring my chair around. I'm gonna turn the chair toward me, all right? So with my legs separated, placing the hands on the chair. Some of you might need to work up here. If you have to work up here, I suggest turning the chair around the other way. So I'm pulling my right hip back, my left hip forward. Lifting the chest. This is variation on Parsvottanasana, pyramid pose. You wanna think you're bringing your left shoulder and ribs in the direction of the right big toe. You can also bring forearms down, belly buttons in. For some of you, if you need the support, you can use your block and put it underneath your forehead if you want to go lower. Huge stretch, huge stretch, all the way again from that Plantar fascia, the sole of the foot, up that Achilles tendon, calf, hands pretty glute. Oh my, my, the back, it's just amazing. And if you want, you can bring your forehead down to the chair. Belly button is in. And then inhale, lift the head. Exhale, I'm going to step my back foot forward, bend the front knee, take the time to slowly roll on up. Now you're gonna see me sweat a lot in these videos, folks, because it's Miami Beach and it's hot. <laughs> All right, now I'm still working with that same leg. So I'm gonna bring that up top here. Those of you with back spine, you can do this sitting in a chair with your leg out in front of you on the floor. And I'll show you here what I'm talking about. So I straighten the leg, and I'm just stepping back a bit so that you straighten fully at the knee joint as well. Again, pulling right hip back, left hip forward. Those of you who need to, you can use a strap around the ball of the foot, but we don't want to do a nose dive like this. I see so many people round down. I want you to lengthen the spine forward. Back spine issues, you do stay upright. Breath in and out. And if you want, you can do yogi toe lock on that big toe. And you turn it into a pose called Pasta Padangushtasana, hand to big toe pose. Just amazing stretch in the hamstring. And breathe. Lovely. Now I'm going to bend the knee, step forward from here. I'm going to go right through the chair. Now, some of you might need to put the towels down underneath you here or underneath the thigh. Absolutely feel free to do that. So I'm going to scoot back a bit so that the back of the chair is right up against the back of my knee. And I'm pushing back through that left heel, using my strong arms. This is phenomenal stretch for the left quad, hip flexor. And you do want to think of this as a back bend. So you want to lift up to go back. You don't want to just collapse back because that can kind of give you a scrunched up feeling. This is variation on Anjaneyasana crescent moon. And if you want, you can take opposite arm up, reaching. And then inhale, 
fully lower. And exhale to come out of that. I bring that back leg forward first, right? Hold a moment, breathe into those back muscles. Right, take that chair back to its original position. Should be about right, yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so legs wide, pigeon toed, Hold on to your chair if need be. Now I'm going to turn that left foot out at 90. The right foot is pivoted, and that's where you want to get the pressure, the pressure outer back heel mount of that front big toe. I'm going to put the right hand on the iliac crest. This side is so much easier for me to hold with a nice squared off pelvis as opposed to the other side. And that's just the way it is sometimes, folks, right? No judgment, no judgment. So hold steady. Now this is basic triangle. And then once we start the movement, it becomes extended triangle. So energy forward and back. Now inhale, lean and reach forward, hand to chair. And I'm keeping my butt and back touching the chair. And then exhale, taking the hand to the top rung of the chair. Rotate torso using that right arm, that right hand to self-adjust the ribs. Mm. Arm up, but if your shoulder is has an issue, keep your hand to your waist. And your neck too, I find that people with neck issues need to keep the hand on the waist. Hips forward, torso back. Breath in and out, just don't let that head sag, right? So we exhale, look down at the big toe. Inhale, drush is beyond that right middle finger. Begin. Careful with vertigo, with the rotating of the head. Get steady. And then maybe bring that right arm out. Oh, connect the energy from the outer right heel to the middle finger of the right hand. Shivananda version of triangle and breathe. And inhale, grab an imaginary core. Push down into that outer right heel, lifting that left arm. You're looking to the left. And then exhale, head forward, hands to the heart. So, good. so now we turn this way, bring the chair out front. Love my new chair, new yoga chair. <laughs> okay, so hands are on the chair, pulling left hip back, right hip forward. Now, technically, I'm actually pulling my real right hip back and my real left hip forward. I'm just working into this thing slowly. So this is the side of a former injury. I just I'm gotta take it easy. So the reason for the lifting of the head from my perspective is that the cervical spine of the neck and the lumbar spine of the low back are both naturally have natural lordotic curves. It implies a slight extension, slight um, back bend, slight arch. And I want them both to do the same. Instead of dropping head down, it makes it actually harder on that low back to stay in, in its natural lordotic curve. Remember, you can use your block for your forehead if you want. Otherwise, you can bring the forehead to the chair. Breath in and out. Of course, for some, you can come down to the floor as well. That's up to you. Engage the quadriceps by lifting up on those kneecaps. And then the inhale, push forward, bend the knee. Exhale, the step forward. Let's have you slowly roll on up. Couple of shoulder rolls. Now we bring that same foot up onto the chair. 
Remember those of you with back spine in particular, you're gonna sit in the chair with your uh, left leg straight out in front of you and toes to the nose. So the foot is what is called dorsiflexed toward the face. So the dorsal side of the foot is toward the face. So I'm sliding that left leg back, my real right. Man, I feel this. Bringing the right shoulder, right ribs in the direction of that left big toe. Yogi toe lock, peace, man. Wedge it in between. And I'm always going to pull from the elbow being bent so that I can engage my bicep muscle instead of overreaching from the shoulder. So you can relax that shoulder a little bit. Breath in and out. Again, you stretch entire length of the posterior side. It's really the whole thing. It's amazing. And then inhale, I bend the knee. You just took a little hop forward. And then I'm going to slide that foot through. Coming up onto the ball of the back foot. I shimmy the leg back. You can just do one thing here. Yeah, this way you can see. Make sure don't take the fabric with me. Okay. Good. I'm all the way, I have the back of the chair all the way up behind my knee. I'm straight, forming that back bend. Now, maybe one side is tighter, so I have to take it easy for the moment because this side is tighter, it feels like today, on the hip flexor and quad. So I don't want to overdo it, right? Slowly ease into it. Through the breath. Open the heart. Anjaneyasana, crescent moon. And arm up. Inhale, reach up, belly button in. Exhale, slowly return. Easy as you slide that back foot forward. Hang out here a moment. Don't forget about your intention for your practice, right? Maybe you're called upon to do something that might be challenging. That's when you think about who you dedicated your practice to. So now, I'm going to turn the chair towards you. And I am going to grab the towels for this. Straddle the chair, down into it, but I am going to take her this way for the moment. And I'm going to start to bring left leg out, and just turn the right. Yep. Going up a little bit more, just making these little adjustments to find my comfort. The arms out. Virabhadrasana to warrior two. Press into that outer left heel, mound of the front big toe. Inhale, palms up. Exhale, palms down. Inhale, palms up. Exhale, palms down. One more. Inhale, up. Exhale down. Now inhale, I'm gonna hold on to the chair, lean and reach forward. Exhale, forearm to thigh. I'm gonna bring the left hand to the waist. So I'm using the right forearm to literally push that right thigh back. That creates an external or a lateral rotation in open. And then you can bring that left arm out, up to whatever is your comfort. Maybe diagonal. Again, connect the energy from the outer left heel to the middle finger of the left hand. 
Another thing that you can do is you can grab a block, put it to the inside of the ankle. I make a soft fist. Now, get a lot more reach out of it. Oh, it feels wonderful. I gotta tell you, and breathe. Tita Parsva Konasana, extended side angle pose. Hmm. And then inhale, push into that outer left heel, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to the heart. We're just gonna move the block underneath here, turning the foot in, and then I'm gonna turn the opposite out. Just gonna do a little shift of the chair. The same concept of lining up heel to mid arch of the back foot. And sitting up tall, put your butt flesh back and out just to make an adjustment to make sure you're sitting up on the ischial tuberosity, your sits bones. Now we'll bring the arms out, hold here. Energy can flow through both sets of middle fingers. Inhale, lean in, reach, hand to chair. Exhale, forearm to thigh. I'm gonna push that leg back as I draw the hips forward, open them up toward the ceiling. Arm can stay here at the waist or start to travel it up and over. Tita Parasva Konasana. Connect the energy from the right middle finger to the outside edge of the right heel. Keep that right thigh contracted Lifting up by the kneecap. And then maybe I'm going to take my block to the inside. And the whole arm is pushing into my inner left thigh and leg. Oh, super big stretch. And breathe, particularly into those tight spots. Inhale. As you exhale, visualize the tightness, releasing from the body. Thank you. And you bring the arm up. Let's hold for a little bit. And get up at us in the two, warrior two. I missed a little bit there, so we're gonna make it up now. Inhale, palms up. Exhale, palms down. Inhale, palms up. Exhale, palms down. One more of each. Inhale, palms up. Exhale, palms down. And then inhale, hands to the heart, looking forward. And then on the exhale, turn left foot in, turn the right foot in. Hold for the moment. Take a breath or two. You need those downtime spokes from strength training. It's imperative. Imperative for your recovery. So now I'm going to remove the towels and I'm going to put the chair back off to the side. And let's just let that back release a bit. So we're going to take an airplane type motion. So it's really for hips mostly, but it's so nice. So the legs are wide apart and we just come into airplane. Just make sure you're safe. Your circumstance is safe, that you're not going to bang into anything. Now, those of you with the back spine, you may have been told not too much twisting. Well, this is really rotation of the hip that we're doing, but just in case you keep your movement small, but notice here what I'm doing. I'm gonna stop. So the ankle, the knee, the hip, and my gaze are all in the same direction. I go here, same concept, ankle, knee, hip, gaze, same direction. And then you continue. And then start to slow it down, maybe make it smaller. 
and then let's bring the hands together in front of the heart. Your choice to feet together or feet separated, eyes open or closed, it's up to you. Just take a few moments once again to reconnect with your breath, sound, and quality of breath. And expressing gratitude and appreciation for our good health. Appreciating our bodies for working so hard for us. And sending those in need love and light. The light and spirit within me honors the light and spirit in you. And this translates into the word namaste. And at the end of each class, we bid each other namaste. Namaste.